Hello, Nick Foley here, uh, Hammond for Hire. Not blogged for a while, so I thought I'd uh, crack on. And you find me in a bit of a quandary as well, so I thought it was quite a nice time to have a chat to you, to be honest. Um, I'm doing a gig later on in the year. I'm doing a depth gig for a, a band that require Hammond organ, and they require a, a distinct... Uh, absence of pink you know and a darker than blue sound so we're trying to get a really dirty organ sound i've got my trusty xk5 here and uh, over there i've got an orange uh, tiny terror valve amp uh down by 2 by 12 mic'd up and i want to see really uh what kind of a tone i can get out of it if I, if I can get it to sound like a dirty c3 on a stationary the band who is going to do nine or ten songs for this gig and um you know, eight or nine of them are going to be stationary. So there's a thought, really, that maybe I don't need to take the Leslie. Maybe I don't need to take the 145. What do you think? You know, could I just get away with it being nicely, warmly overdriven? And then uh, looking at the songs, you know, uh, I've been so I've been auditioning the sound today and the tone. I think it's far too early, really, to be learning the notes. You know, it's a long way. It's a few months away, and I haven't got time for that. So I'll learn the notes later. That's, that's all right. <laughs> Hopefully that'll be okay. So... Um, I thought, let's have a go at getting the sound. Let's see if we can get the sound right and see if I can get the overdrive to be right. Uh, th but then the problem is, of course, in those last two songs, there's a couple of songs where I need the Leslie. So do I carry the 145? Help, hopefully out of shot there. Do I carry the 145 with me as well? And we go we go AB. Or or do I get the trusty uh, Neo ventilator, which we'll have a look at in a bit, that I've had for years, you know. Um, used to use it a lot. To be honest, I don't now. I carry a 145 and that's that's what I do. So... Do I take that instead? So let's let's have a look, really. Let's see what we've got. Let's go through the sound and see the pros and cons of each, and then maybe together we'll we'll make a conclude draw a conclusion. How's that sound? Okay. Um, all right then. So um, I will reframe, and we'll uh, we'll have a look at the sound that we've got. Okay. So here we are again. Then stomach in shot. Right. So we've got beautiful XK5 just over here. Let A Mark One ventilator, and then over there in the distance we have a, an orange tiny terror. Now I don't know if you can pick up straight away or not. There's a bit of hum, isn't there? Can you hear that? Now that hum is entirely from the vent, mm, so that's not good. And that's because it's being because of the preamp stages, right? So being pushed. So let's kind of uh, kind of ignore that hum for the moment. We'll come to that in a minute, but the vent is in bypass. The tone's not being changed, but there's a bit of hum going on. Okay, so what I thought I'd do um, is really try and get the, get the tone. So, Station with Leslie. It's clean-ish. The overdrive that you can hear is dialed in on the valve on the XK5. It's not bad, is it? Yeah. And the uh, the vibrato there, uh, chorus and vibrato set to C3, does actually does actually sound right. There's a lot of lot of a lot of conflict really over the vibrato whether it sounds good enough or not. Certainly on the three, lacking lacking a bit. And I've I've often sort of thought this was lacking too. But when you've got a stationary Leslie on. more convincing really anyway so what are we going to do well i'm going to take my jacket off for starters so that doesn't sit in shot and we're going to turn it up right? so let's have a go let's have a go at the sound oh yeah so not disappointed we'll get the reverb off as you kind of expect really dirty and horrible but it has got dirty in quite a nice nice way could be a reverb on so what have we what have we learned well first of all you can hear all the harmonics coming up you can hear the, the, the left hand coming up and you get that That's kind of what you want. That is what you want. Let's say, um, I don't know, let's pick an old Deep Purple song if you don't smoke on the water. Maybe. Or, 
um, you're speaking now, speaking, deep up speaking percussion all up. Can you see up there, up there, four up? And so you got to yeah, that click. It's the way to get everything just a little bit louder in 1970. Anything you could do to get it up, you know. That sounds better. Sounds sounds okay, doesn't it? So, what about the um, let's let's say that's okay. I think there's a bit of tweaking that could be done here, actually, if I'm honest, on the equalizer, and I'll have a look at that. And maybe I'm driving that too hard. Maybe I'm not. Maybe I'm not. I do love the XK5 for the virtual matching transformer, and in uh, yours and my language, that means it's not a synth anymore, and you can play the left hand on an organ sound. It's not going to kill the right hand. Hear how you can hear it all? Usually on the synth or on um, some of the old clones, you would, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't do green onions on one. Feel that? You know, in the olden days, I used to have the bottom one playing a slightly different registration there. You hear that? Drop that down. So it wouldn't, wouldn't cause a problem. But that's not how he played it, was it? When he, when he played it, he had the percussion already on. He was just on the bottom. Going through the riff. And then... You know? Uh, so you didn't have to do a quick volume change, a quick change of the old draw bars, get the percussion on and all that before you get onto that first. No. So, virtual matching transformer. What a great advertisement. I don't know why Hammond just don't tell everyone about that, because it's the... Probably... One of the most significant changes they've made. The other one is the key bed, and I think I've spoken about the key bed, where the key bed's just... <laughs> exactly how you want it. Behind this camera is a 1960 Hammond C3 that you may have seen before, and I'm telling you, that key bed is the same. So, all right, so here we go. So I've got, I've got a dirty sound. I'm playing in a dirty band. Everything is dirty and fantastic is it not okay so we get now we get now what happens well eighth song in it's a leslie song right you need a leslie on for some reason um i'm gonna drop this out of bypass still got the noise apologies for that now can you hear the leslie noise yeah, okay, I'll come back to that one. Uh, I've ramped the drive right down because I'm already driving it and I've got the distance uh, really low as well of the sort of um, of the microphone, the virtual microphone that Leslie's creating because the tone was changing. So I'm trying to match the tone a little bit with the organ. But Okay, first of all, it's overdriving far too much because the effect is in the wrong place in the chain. <laughs> Okay, so there it is. So let me just go, I'll just go and check the inputs here, make sure it's everything we want it to be. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so it's set to guitar, it's set to guitar, it's set to high output. That's exactly what it should be. I was hoping it sound a little bit better than that. A bit clunky, bit ink. Not terrible, but you know, still, still don't know whether I'll uh, bring the old 145. So let's switch the Leslie on. Interesting, you know, let's drop it in bypass. Back to Naughty Hammond again, and let's get the internal XK5 going, um, Leslie Sim going. So, take the bypass out. Still clunky. A lot thinner, wouldn't you say? Get it on first. Well. Onto bypass. Onto vent. I think we know the vent's winning it. But what do you think, guys and girls? Change key halfway through that run. Um, I don't think it's there, do you? 
So, happy with this. It's kind of what you want, isn't it? You know? You know, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's nice and horrible, and I think... I think the guys will be happy with that. But I don't think my Leslie simulator is doing it on the same EQ, and that's the problem, you know, I can put the Leslie CMR on and change the EQ, but I don't really want to do that if I can help it. Nice sound. Nice kind of effect, but not really what I'm after. Bit overblown, really. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. So, the, what's the conclusion? I think the conclusion is. It's one four five time, isn't it? I think, I think you know. Um, I shall take the vent out the line. I'll put an AB in there, and then uh, maybe I'll get back to you. Maybe I'll play the two together, and we can see see the flick over. But clearly, the Leslie needs to be needs to be in line. I just need to make sure that I'm driving it right, so I can get that cut over because the tiny terror is doing the drive there. fantastic but when i when i ab over onto the leslie for the leslie song for want of a better word it's not going to be driven as hard so i need to work out the difference there so um oh yeah, that's what we've learned today hasn't it so we're back in the room repositioned slightly so you can see the old lurking 145 there trying to get into the into the shot i think we've done okay we i'm happy with that sound <laughs> Why wouldn't I be? Less happy with the Leslie. Sim. It's got a clonk, got a, a resonant, high resonant clonk. I don't know if you can hear that. It's too, it's just too hot, I think. Even with the drive turned down, I think he's trying to do something with the drive there and it's not doing, not doing the same way that he wanted to. Um, so, next time. You see me, I may have gone through the songs and actually learned something, which would be nice. And also, I think we'll be we'll be switching AB and I'll be trying to work out how to drive it to the same level or even less. But I think it is, I think it's evident in this as well, that you don't need to drive the Leslie sound as hard. So, on a fast Leslie with that level of drive, you've not got a lot of note left. <laughs> Oh, it's quite fun, isn't it? But it's not really it. I mean, maybe you could um, put the vibrato on. That's, that's okay, isn't it? Um, that's okay, that's okay. It's very made in Japan, very deep purple made in Japan, isn't it? For example. But um, no, I think we're going to... I think we're going to go, Leslie. We're going to get more stuff in the van. And we're going to get more complicated... For this gig being a depth gig, I think what I'll do is I'll bring all my own microphones and stands, mic all my equipment up, uh, submix it, and hand the engineer a cable, you know, and say, there you go. Plop, plop that in, and I'll balance everything myself. That might be the way. Could even then send myself a monitor if I needed to, um, to make it easier. It's always a difficult mix because you really want it as simple as possible. There's nothing worse than a depth coming up and it being like, you know, <laughs> really complicated, you know, and they go, oh my God, wait for this depth to get all these gear on stage and all that kind of stuff. So we're trying to work back the other way, you know. Um, I guess we just see, man, uh, maybe, maybe no Leslie at all and for two songs we'll just say, you're going to have to, you know, hear it like this, you know. <laughs> Sounds like a Leslie, doesn't it? <laughs> but it's actually the vibrato. Now let's go to C1 on the vibrato. Turn it down a little bit. Could, could work, couldn't it, do you think? I don't know, I don't know. Right, so thank you for watching. Thank you very much for all of your, uh, your comments and the help and what have you that you've given me. And hopefully 
I'll move that out of the way. It's annoying me. There's a couple of things, uh, a couple of questions that you've asked me over the over the past twelve months, and um, a few people have got in touch. Thank you. Got um, a few depths out of uh, of this, which is very nice. I've also put a few musicians in touch with other musicians as well and other people wanting which is quite nice too um i'll speak to you soon thank you very much for watching cheers